panel. This is Dr. Emmanuel. Um, so I want us to do a very quick revision. Hello, welcome to my ganglia of the brain. Welcome to my channel. Um, so if you're new to this channel, welcome. I hope you get to find this uh, this moment quite um, enriching. Um, so let's begin without saying too much. So the basal ganglia actually is a subcortical, you know, a collection of subcortical, you know, ganglia or nuclei within the cerebral hemispheres. It also includes um, a few, a few nuclei or a few gray matter areas within the brainstem, as we'll get to see the substantia nigra. But most of the basal ganglia are actually within the cerebral hemispheres. So they are called subcortical nuclei because the main or the major nucleus, the major you know, um, collection of nuclei in the cerebral hemisphere lie within the cerebral cortex, okay? The cerebral gray matter, the cortex. But we have other gray matter structures which are deep to this um, cortex of the, of the cerebrum and they constitute the basal ganglia. And they play vital roles in the control of the body, you know, control of neurological activities within the body. So on this image, I've highlighted, um, you know, um, the basal ganglia. So here we have the caudate nucleus. We've got the head of the caudate nucleus there. Okay, and we've got the tail of the caudate nucleus. So on this, on this, on this transverse section of the brain, we can see, um, we can see the the head of the caudate nucleus, we can see what we call the lentiform nucleus. So the lentiform nucleus is a name that, you know, comprises two parts of the basal ganglia. It, it, it includes the, the, the putamen and the globus pallidum. So globus, something that is global, that means it's a bit round or ovoid. So the globus pallidus is this ovoid looking structure. Whereas this one that looks more you know, more straight or more longitudinal is the putamen. And together, you can see they form a complex, the globus pallidus and the putamen form this oval complex called the lentiform nucleus. Lentiform means resembling lens. So, you know, like the lens of the eye, biconvex. So it's, it looks a bit, you know, roundish or oval. So lentiform nucleus. Caudate nucleus, the head of the caudate, we've got the tail of the caudate nucleus. On this part here, we have the thalamus. So the thalamus is not part of the basal ganglia, but it has a close relation to the basal ganglia. It's very closely related to the basal ganglia. It also communicates with the basal ganglia. So in within the basal ganglia, between the case basal ganglia and the thalamus, we have this area of white matter here, which looks it looks bent, isn't it? So it's got a proximal limb or an anterior limb. It's got a posterior limb and it's got a genu. So genu means a bend, like, you know, like the knee. So our knee is also called the genu. So the genu actually means a knee, like a bend. And that's called the internal capsule. So this is the anterior limb of the internal capsule. We've got the posterior limb of the internal capsule. And we've got the genu of the internal capsule. What this internal capsule does is that it is a root or, you know, some people, the Americans would say route, you know, of communication, nervous communication between the cortex and, you know, lower parts of the body, lower motor nuclei and, the, and even um, sensory nuclei. So it contains ascending and descending fibers through which the rest of the brain and the spinal cord communicates with the cerebral cortex. Okay. And then on the lateral side of on the, lat the lateral side of the putamen, we have another gray matter, which is called the external capsule. So we've got the internal capsule. We've got an external capsule that lies between the putamen and the clostrum. The clostrum is part of the basal ganglia. Okay? It's also part of the basal ganglia. So between the putamen and the clostrum, we have the external capsule. And between the clostrum and the insula of frail, that's the insula of frail. We mentioned this insula of Rail, this island of rail or insula in a previous video where we looked at the structure of the cerebral hemispheres. Okay, we made we did mention the insula, and this insula actually is just part of the it's just part of the cerebral cortex that gets invaginated. Okay, it gets it gets you know buried 
you know, between the between the lower part of the frontal lobe, parietal cortex, and the upper part of, you know, of the temporal lobe. So it just gets invaginated and buried there, but it's part of the cerebral cortex. So between this insula of this island of rare or insula and the claustrum, we have the extreme capsule. So internal capsule, external capsule, and the extreme capsule. They're all, you know, white matter, uh, white matter bundles. But the most important one you need to know is the internal capsule. And you need to know that we have the caudate nucleus. We've got the lentiform nucleus, which comprises the putamen and the globus pallidum. That's the tail of the caudate nucleus. We've got the claustrum. Okay, We've got the claustrum. Um, so just some reading. Uh, this, this is extracted from the internet. So I just extracted some of this information from the internet, whereas this image is extracted from the Atlas of Human Anatomy by Frank Netters. So this is an extract from the internet, just relevant information about the basal ganglia. So basal ganglia, you know, is responsible or plays a role in different functions of the body, eye movement coordination, the fact that you can, you know, you can think about moving your eyes to the right or left or up and down, and that movement happens in coordination with your thoughts. So eye movement coordination, the basal ganglia plays a role. Regulation of body movement, very vital. You know, the, the basal ganglia kind of fine tunes, you know, fine tunes motor movement. So it plays a very strong role in, you know, it coordinates, it coordinates the activities of the cerebral cortex. So your cerebral cortex, your primary motor cortex tells your body, move your right arm, you know, and your basal ganglia just helps to initiate that at the right, you know, at the right moment, or sometimes might try to inhibit certain movements. You know, so working memory, a role in motivation, decision making. Okay, so the basal ganglia plays a role, you know, in decision making, in addition to your prefrontal cortex. So disruption of the basal ganglia network forms the basis for several motor disorders like Parkinson's disease, Huntington's chorea, Torres, Torres syndrome, which is a tick disorder. So disruption of this basal ganglia network presents you know, depending on the parts that is, that is affected and depending on the extent of affectation, you can have several motor problems. So just a read up again, the basal ganglia refers to a group of subcortical nuclei within the brain, responsible primarily for motor control, as well as other roles such as motor learning, executive functions, emotional behavior, and plays an, and they play an important role in reward and reinforcement addictive behaviors and habit formation. This last part, we'll get to see that the when it comes to reward and reinforcement, the substantial nigra, which produces dopamine, and you know, it plays a vital role in this reward and reinforcement and addiction. So anything that increases the release of dopamine from the substantial nigra gives you pleasure and you want to do that subsequently. This image is an extract from the internet, also I found it, you know, on Google, and it just made sense. So the basal ganglia, this is the cerebral cortex. This is the basal ganglia network. You know, you've got we've got the corpus striatum, we've got the thalamus, which is not part of the which the thalamus is not part of the basal ganglia, but it's in close relation to the basal ganglia. So we've got, you know, the sub sub subthalamic nucleus, the substantial nigra, the, you know, um, we've got the globus pallidus, you know, um, the putamen and the rest of the basal ganglia. So you can see that they communicate with the cerebral cortex. Information comes from your cerebral cerebral cortex, your primary motor or accessory motor, you know, other parts gets processed. It gets processed, you know within the basal ganglia or by the basal ganglia, the basal ganglia sends back information to the cerebral cortex, okay? So it helps to fine tune a lot of information that, you know, that come from your cerebral cortex. This image is also extracted from the internet, which I found uh, very, you know, very simplistic, a very easy way of remembering the structure of the basal ganglia. So that's the head of our caudate nucleus. That's our thalamus, which is not part of it, but closely related. We've got the internal capsule, we've got the anterior limb, we've got the genu, and we've got the posterior limb of our internal capsule, which is a white matter capsule through which ascending and descending fibers, you know, communicate between the cerebral cortex and the lower parts of the CNS. 
We've got our globus pallidus there. I've got our putamen, and these two constitute the lentiform nucleus complex, the lentiform nucleus. We've got the internal capsule, we've got our external capsule, we've got our clostrum, which is part of the basal ganglia, and lateral to this clostrum, we've got the extreme, extreme capsule. That's the tail of our caudate nucleus. So the internal capsule contains ascending and descending nerve fibers. This is a sagittal section of the brain, showing us the structure of the internal capsule and what it looks like. So this here is our lentiform nucleus. You, know, you can see on this sagittal view, it looks like a lens, like the lens of the eye, biconvex. And it comprises the globus pallidus medially and the putamen laterally. And this is our corded nucleus. You know, it extends from the frontal lobe all the way posteriorly to the occipital lobe. So this is the head of, we've got the head of the cord of the corded, the corded nucleus, we've got the body, the long body of the corded nucleus, and we've got the tail of the corded nucleus. Yeah, the three parts, the head, the body, and the tail. And just attached to the tail is the amygdala, the amygdala, okay? Some include the amygdala as part of the corded nucleus. Um, some include the amygdala as part of the limbic system, but it's closely related. We've got, um, so this is our thalamus. We've got the pulvina, which is the posterior projection. We've got the medial and lateral geniculate bodies. This is a transverse section of a plane. You know, the upper part of the midbrain, the transverse section of the midbrain. And the reason I got this image also from, the, from Google, from the internet, is because it shows us the substantia nigra. So nigra means black, substantia means substance, isn't it? And nigra is black, so it's dark, it's pigmented. It's a pigmented structure within the, within the mid, midbrain, between the cerebral crews of the midbrain and the tegmentum. So this area is the tegmentum, okay? Behind is the tegmentum. So this is the tegmentum of the midbrain, and this is the, you know, the cerebral crews, plural is crura. And between it, between these two, the tegmentum and the cross, lie this pigmented body called the substantia nigra, which we've mentioned contributes to the reward system. Okay, you do something, you smoke, you take cocaine, you do something, it gives you that dopamine feeling, and you can easily get hooked or dependent or addicted to that. To that, so substantia nigra. Substantia nigra has two parts. It has the pars compactor and it has the pars reticularis. Just you can just know it. Might not necessarily know the details of what those various parts do. The substantial nigra, nigra's function is to produce dopamine and assist in controlling movement as part of the structure. So in addition to producing, you know, contributing to the reward system, the dopamine, you know, dopamine helps in regulating movement. And that's why when you have problems with your substantial nigra, you can have Parkinson's disease, you know. Yeah. So this is um, lateral image of the brain that also just you know illustrates the the basal ganglia. So the one painted in red are parts of the basal ganglia, and the ones in blue are related structures. Okay, so related structures. You can see the 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 amygdala is classified as a related structure, even though some people would include the amygdala as part of the basal ganglia. So that is our. Uh, Lentiform nucleus, we've got the globus pallidus, which is that one. We've got the putamen lateral, we've got the head of our caudate nucleus, the body of our caudate nucleus, we've got the tail of our caudate nucleus, we've got our thalamus, the medial, the medial, um, medial relationship to, to our lentiform nucleus, okay? And the subthalamic nucleus is part of the basal ganglia. So a nucleus subthalamic means beneath inferior to the thalamus, so the subthalamic nucleus, we've got the nucleus accumbens, olfactory tubercle, the ventral pallidum. So these are smaller nuclei that, con that contributes, that are part of the basal ganglia. And we've also got the substantia nigra within the midbrain. Okay, that's the midbrain, that's the pons. So within the midbrain, we've got the substantia nigra. So this essentially is what, you know, we may need to know about the basal ganglia. We may not really need to know too much, but knowing the structure of the basal ganglia, knowing the basic functions, knowing that the internal capsule lies within, you know, between this basal ganglia and the thalamus, and that it has the anterior limb, the genu, and the, and the posterior, and knowing that it's a white matter 
you know, structure, the internal capsule, you know, and also knowing that it, can, it transmits, you know, it's made up of ascending and descending, you know, fibers, or, you know, I think that's enough, enough information about the basal ganglia. So if you think he's been helpful, kindly like, subscribe, and share with friends that you think, you know, would benefit from this. Thank you very much.